We're here, everyone. We are here. The very, very end of the season. Two games to go for Arsenal, three for Man City. It is crunch time. To quote Iron Man, we're in the end game now. Was it Iron Man who said it? I'm pretty sure it's Iron Man who said it. Um, that's not the point. This is it. This is it, people. Arsenal travel to Old Trafford and Man United, and City have two away games to come before that final day of the season. And I think we are staring now at four crucial days in the Premier League. And I mean four days, not just because City play on the Saturday and then they go to Tottenham on the Tuesday, but everything that happens in between is really important as well. That's what I want to break down here. It's not actually even just about the title race, but even the top four race too. And both can have an impact on the other. And that's what I look ahead to now, because if I just show you what the next four days look like, you've got all the fixtures there, but we want to highlight Fulham versus Man City on the Saturday, the 12th. 30 kickoff UK time and then Tottenham versus Burnley you're probably thinking uh, what have they got to do with it we will come to it that's the three o'clock game on Saturday that is important for us to keep an eye on Arsenal then travel to Man United at 4 30 on Sunday before Aston Villa host Liverpool again I think the questions coming from you all are why do we care about that Liverpool out of the title race but all of that, I believe, is really important before Tottenham hosts Man City at 8pm on Tuesday night. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Four crucial, crucial games, I think, will or may, in fact, I'm pretty confident, will decide the Premier League season, the Premier League title, in fact. Now, let's talk about what I mean, because we'll start with the hypotheticals in the title race and deal with the immediate future, which is the weekend coming now. Fulham hosts Man City and Man United hosts Arsenal. I'm going to give you two hypothetical results. A, that Man City draw at Fulham. Of course, if they lose, that would be great. But I want to go for the slightly more realistic one, which is that if they drop points, it's going to be a draw. And Arsenal beating Man United at Old Trafford, wouldn't that be great? If we could do that, we haven't done that since 2020 and our record there in terms of winning is poor. But it would leave Man City three points behind Arsenal with a game in hand, needing to win at Tottenham just to at least take it to level on points and goal difference of which Arsenal's is superior. Now, some people are worrying about the goal difference front with City chipping away at it. Here's the way I'd put it. I think we're six goals ahead of them now. If we win the rest of our games, then obviously that goal difference gets better. That that six becomes, you know, two one nil wins would make it eight, for example. That's before City kick a ball and play their games. But if they're to drop points, and that's one of those games where they haven't got goals on the board. So they need to make up eight in the other two. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying goal difference isn't important. I mean, it might come down to that. And City have the ability to put seven past a team and, and massively outscore teams. So I'm not saying we shouldn't worry about it. But I think there's still a way to go before we really kind of fret about that. The point is we need them to lose or draw or drop points somewhere before that becomes a factor. Now, like I said, if we just keep this... On screen, essentially Arsenal would have 86 points and 83 points going to next week before City have even played Tottenham. But let's flip the hypotheticals because this is how the title race could potentially even be decided just this weekend alone. If City win at Fulham, which let's face it is the expected result, and Man United beat Arsenal, which let's face it is very possible, they're the home team. Or let's even say that's a draw and make that 83 points actually 84. I hate to say it Gunas and sorry to say it, but... I think that would effectively end the title race there. City, to be ahead of us with a game in hand as well, they would need to drop points in both games against Spurs and West Ham at home. Spurs are in terrible form. West Ham, I think, are on the beach. I just, there'd be no chance for it, quite frankly. So I think if, unfortunately, these slightly more likely results happen, which is Arsenal dropping points at Old Trafford and Man City beating Fulham, then I think it could be wrapped up this weekend. We'll talk about that if we need to. But let's assume that both teams win. Let's assume that City and Arsenal keep up these amazing runs, both win. And now we're looking ahead to next week. And this is where it gets interesting because you're all asking me, well, why does this Tottenham-Burnley game matter? I'll show you because the top four race would look like this if Spurs are to get that win at three o'clock on Saturday. Villa will have played 36 games and be on 67 points and Tottenham will be on 36 games played with 63 points. So four points behind, but both would have two games to play where Arsenal, for example, and many other clubs in the Premier League would only have the one left. So how does this look? Well, let's first by start by just touching 
on the recent run of these teams. Because if I show you uh, Villa's recent results, yes, they beat Arsenal at the Emirates, and that might be the result that's taken and snatched the Premier League from us. But defeats at Lille, 1-0 down to Bournemouth, but in fairness did beat them 3-1, dropping a 2-0 lead at home to Chelsea. And then four, no, three defeats in a row since then. So winless in four leaves Villa, yes, in a good position to finish in the top four, but not as comfortable, not as secure as they'd like it to have been, especially considering Brighton's form therein. Villa would have hoped to have won that game or at least not lost it. And having been 2-0 up against Chelsea, it really should have been wrapped up, but they haven't. They've given Tottenham a slight chance. Now, Tottenham themselves are in no better form. Since beating Villa 4-0, which might be the result of that, that's actually kept this alive for them, they've lost 3-0 at Fulham. They drew at West, uh, at West Ham. They did win their two home games against Luton and Forest, albeit not massively convincingly in both, and have lost the last four as well. So neither Tottenham or Villa can actually say that they've shown the consistency to really get top four over the line right now but one of them is going to and I think it's really up for grabs because if I show you the remaining fixtures in this top four race Villa hosts Liverpool on Monday night so we've had the Saturday game where City face Fulham and Tottenham face Burnley we then play on Sunday against Man United at Old Trafford and then all eyes are on Villa versus Liverpool now the reason I think this is so important is because this is Villa's 37th game Tottenham then hosts City on the Tuesday night and then the last two games for them are Villa away at Palace on the final day and Tottenham away to an already relegated Sheffield United. Palace are in great form, Sheffield have been poor all season, there's a real chance that results go Tottenham's way on that day but they're going to want to take it to that final day. So I give you more hypotheticals. If Liverpool beat Villa and Tottenham beat Man City, and it's worth remembering that Tottenham have a fantastic record against City, which we'll talk about in a little minute, in a little minute, in a second, um, it would mean that Liverpool um, beating Villa would leave Villa on 67 points with 37 games played and Tottenham on 66 with 37 games played. Now, we'll say this. We don't need Spurs to beat Man City. Like, that's all great for Tottenham. Beating them and then they got within a point and maybe Palace do them a favour and they beat Sheffield United and they've turned it all around with the last three games. I don't really care about whether that happens. All I need is for Tottenham to believe going to that City game on Tuesday night that it can happen. That is what's crucial here. Because if Liverpool beat Villa, <coughs> Tottenham go into that City game and they might draw and they'll be on 65 uh, 64 points three points off Villa and you're feeling like we well, you know draw would do it for Villa and you're thinking there's probably no chance of it cool good on Una Emery good on Villa get top four I don't care I just need Tottenham to go into that City game with something to genuinely play for and that's why we need that Liverpool win we need that Liverpool win against Villa and that's why Monday night is still crucial because we need Spurs to believe that there is something to play for now draw I think might to be fair do it but Spurs have to have genuine, genuine, what's the word? Motivation. They need to have something real to go, ah, that's that's a reason to beat City. Now, there's a lot of debate right now. Spurs fans want Tottenham to throw the game. <laughs> I kind of get it. I'd probably be the same. Um, and a lot of people say, no, Tottenham professionals, too much pride. I've been listening to some um, sort of people who, who talk on Tottenham podcasts, they're saying there's no way the players, they've got too much pride and, you know, there'll be many, many other reasons, maybe appearance fees, bonuses, whatever it might be. There's a lot of reasons, personal pride, a lot of reasons why Tottenham will give their all against Man City. But I do think there's a difference between, you know, we have pride and we're professionals and we want to win a game to... If we win, there's a good chance playing Champions League football. And this has a very direct impact on my career, on my future, on my development, on what this club can do. It's a very different motivation. There's a very different drive. I've got no doubt the Tottenham players actually will go out against City and, yeah, try and perform and give their best in front of their home crowd for the final time at home that se this season. I I've got no doubt they will try. I don't think they're going to throw it and just be like, ah, oh, who cares? But there's a different underlying motivation and something running through you when it's like oh hold on like we can actually we can actually achieve something here forget Arsenal forget all that if they win it what can we do we've got something on the line here and that's why I think these next four games are crucial you might think James this is all pure hope and cope and all that look I'll show you this from April 2019 these are Man City the results from Man City's perspective against uh Tottenham so all the L's in red are Tottenham uh, are Man City defeats against Tottenham but as you can see the FA Cup game earlier this season was City's 
first win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but it came in the FA Cup. They haven't won there since they moved in in 2019. In fact, they haven't even scored there, which just shows you Tottenham have got something against City. Let's try take it to that day. We've got to beat Man United first, and that won't be easy because United have moments players that can make things happen. I don't care what kind of mess they're in. It's still Old Trafford, and it's still an expensively assembled squad with quality in it. I think we can do it. I'm predicting a 2-1 win, but I just think these next four days are crucial and defining. If we don't win at Old Trafford and Fulham unfortunately don't get anything against City, I just think that's the title done if I'm being really, really honest. But even if both teams win, there's a reason to want to keep an eye on what happens on Monday and Tuesday night because it could impact what happens for Arsenal. So yeah, there you go, people. Let me know in the comment section below what you're making in the next four days. I think we're here. I think we're in the end game now. This is the crucial part. It all gets decided for me in these next four days. And I just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this, including my Football First podcast, which drops every Monday to Friday at 6am. And I know it's annoying. I am really sorry to have to ask. But if you want to show support to the channel, hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know. Thanks again.